Let's fix those annoying Dexcom T7 signal losses. In this video, I'll show you what to do when your Dexcom T7 loses signal. I'll show you how to quickly fix it, what I do to prevent it, as well as what Dexcom supposedly intends to do to fix the issue. Because I love my Dexcom, but not only is the lost signal incredibly infuriatingly annoying, <laughs> it also means no glucose readings. So basically, when we have lost signal, the device is useless. And just the other day, it happened again. I had lost signal, and of course, it was not an ideal time. I was out for a walk. And it's so frustrating. And I know it's not just me. Plenty of you guys are experiencing signal loss as well. I upgraded to Dexcom T7 from Dexcom T6 in the spring. And I overall think that the Dexcom T7 is an upgrade from the T6 or actually any of the other CTMs available on the market. However, the lost signal has been driving me bonkers. So what does one do? I still want to keep my Dexcom T7. So I decided to try and fix it and try to reduce the amount of lost signal. And that's what I'll be sharing with you today. I'll also be sharing how Dexcom is intending on fixing it on their end. What I realized is that there are times where I have signal loss more frequently than others. So I did what I always do and I dug into my data and tried to identify, well, what am I doing differently when I don't see signal loss as frequently? I went through my Clarity report. So Clarity is the Dexcom reporting software. And I started to see some really interesting patterns. Main one is that it seems to make a huge difference where I wear my Dexcom T7 sensor. The Dexcom T7 sensor is FDA approved for wear on the arm only. It is CE marked for wear on the arm as well as on the stomach. It's the same sensor, but different labels. But that means because I live in the US, wearing it on the stomach is reality a no-no. It is considered off-label wear. But I've been wearing it on the stomach a lot. And what I see in my data is that I actually have less signal loss when I wear it on my stomach. What do you know? I don't actually think that the signal is stronger when the sensor is on my stomach. I just think it's generally closer to my phone that I used as my receiver. Based on my observations, the signal strength is pretty awful and nowhere near the 20 feet. So that's six meters that Dexcom claims that it is. For example, if I wear the sensor on my arm, let's say on my right arm and I have my phone in my left pocket or just on the left side of me, I'll often lose signal. So when I place the sensor closer to my, well, to my center on my stomach, I'm less likely to lose signal regardless of whether or not I put my phone on my left side or my right side. It's a pretty simple fix. However, it does mean that you have to wear it off-label if you live in the US. And that leads me to the second tip I have for fixing the Dexcom T7 signal loss. And that is to keep your phone or your receiver close by and preferably with nothing between you and the receiver. And sometimes even a purse is too much. If you've lost signal because you're too far away from your phone or your receiver, that signal will be picked up again once you're back in range, just not necessarily right away. So the main tip on how to fix a lost signal is to move whatever you ch choose to see your blood sugar readings on close to your sensor and wait it out. Those are my two main tips on how to fix signal loss. So that is to wear it on the stomach and to keep the receiver or your phone really close by. But Dexcom also recognizes that this is an issue. So they do have some tips on how to deal with this. And this is Dexcom's website. As you can see, they have a whole page dedicated to Dexcom T7 signal loss they know this is an issue, right? So there's basically a few different sections here. There is what to do if you're having signal loss. That's the first part, then it's how to prevent it. And just there's a few troubleshooting tips as well. I'm not gonna read all of it to you. You can see this on their website, but I wanna focus on some of the, what I think are the most important parts, right? So the first part is if you're having signal loss, it's just not coming back there suggesting to turn the Bluetooth on and off. It's kind of like a restarting the system. That works for me. Um, of course, they're saying the same thing as I did. You need to keep the device very close to you, uh, preferably on the same side of your body as you have your, um, your sensor. I must admit, if, when I put it on my stomach, it's fine to have the phone in my back pocket. So there's that. Um, of course, you shouldn't close down the app. Um, and that's basically it when it comes to the, 
you know, what you can do when you're having signal loss. What I think is interesting, let's swipe down a little bit here, is that how to prevent signal loss. So they do have some ideas here that I didn't know of initially. So for example, keeping your battery charged. I thought that was interesting. Um, and also there are some settings that they recommend that you use. So if you're getting a lot of signal loss and none of my tips work, maybe have a peep at your settings. And then of course, if it continues more than 30 minutes, contact technical support. You can do that through the app if you're in the US. You can also request a new sensor if, the, if it's just not working. And yeah, well, basically this is it. You see, there's not a lot, but some pretty solid tips. Another tip that I also found super helpful is to not lose my cool and to change my Dexcom alert settings to reduce my frustration. Signal loss will continue to happen occasionally, especially when you're sleeping and you can't make sure that you're close to your receiver. Well, Dexcom does supposedly have a fix in the pipeline. I'll get back to that in a second, but until then we'll have to work with what we have. What I do is that I turn off the signal loss alerts at night. My sleep is too important. I don't need to be woken up every time there's a signal loss because what I've noticed is I toss and turn a lot when I sleep. So there'll be signal loss, but this signal will come back again fairly quickly. So I don't feel unsafe with this strategy. You of course have to evaluate if this is the right thing for you to do. Placing the sensor on my stomach, keeping the phone close by, following the Dexcom tips and adjusting the alerts, all tips on how to fix the Dexcom T7 signal loss issue here and now. But Dexcom supposedly has a long-term fix up their sleeve, so let's talk about it. As you might know, Dexcom T7 now integrates with the Tandem and the Islet insulin pumps. However, it's only an upgraded version of the Dexcom T7 sensor that will work with the Tandem pump. But that upgraded Dexcom T7 sensor has been fixed so that now consistent signal loss should be a thing of the past. So how do you know if the Dexcom T7 sensor that you're holding in your hand is an upgraded version or an old version? Well, the communication about this has been pretty awful, I'd say. It's been lacking, there hasn't really been any. And it's actually not super easy to tell the two versions apart. What you want to look for is an underlining of the LBL number. So you can see that here. If the LBL number is not underlined, and you can see I have a sensor here, this is the LBL number, it's not underlined. That means that this is an old version, and not one of the new versions of the Dexcom T7. Dexcom is rolling out these new versions of the Dexcom T7, but the reality is that you might receive some from the first batch, and I just don't know if you can return it and get an upgraded version. You should know that if you have a tandem hybrid closed loop system and you want to pair it with the Dexcom T7, you have to use the updated version. If you try to pair your tandem system with an old versions of the Dexcom T7, you will get an error message. If you get an error message saying sensor not started, 43T, then you know that you're trying to pair your tandem pump with an old version of the Dexcom T7. So check the LBL number, and if it's not underlined and you have a tandem pump, you can contact Dexcom for a replacement. But yeah, signal loss is frustrating to say the least, but there are things we can do to reduce the risk of consistent signal loss, and hopefully with this new updated Dexcom T7 sensor, consistent signal loss will be a thing of the past. At least I hope so. And I do still love my Dexcom. It's definitely on my list of diabetes devices I wouldn't be without. Check out this video for more diabetes, tech devices, and gizmos that I wouldn't be without. If you like this video, please give it a like. Remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That is that little bell. That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.